What? Your you wrestling, photo? wrestling photo? Yeah, my wrestling you, you photo. Know, you know Guam right. Felix? No. Guam. Should I know him? Yeah, Guam, oh, I know. I love yeah, Guam. Guam, yeah. Yeah, I know him as Guam. Yeah, he yeah. He used to be my roommate. Uh, he, I, he lived in my closet. Uh, from <laughs> wait, from Really? I swear well, to he's God. from Guam. Yeah. And he could he, live in a... Like, he's like a big guy now, but like, yeah. he keep posting picture of him like on Facebook, like when he was like a football stud in high school, and it's like a totally different looking... Do you hang out with Guam? I used to a lot. He used to be my boy. Yeah, uh, yeah, I haven't yeah. hung out with him lately. A bit Guam is he not fun- his Is real he funny? Name. I think he's very funny. I haven't seen him really. Yeah, he's funny. Yeah, I saw him at... He's uh, more urban. Oh, he's urban. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Were there guys in San Diego started with that uh, weren't funny? Well, I mean, there's everywhere I think that aren't funny. Right. You know, um, but we were friends with them. It's hard to tell, when, especially when you're starting. Yeah. And there's gr- guys around you that just know they don't have it. You're so excited. You think those people know they don't have it? Like they, they don't themselves, have, they, they, they know that? They don't know. Mm-mm. Yeah, right? That's what I'm saying. They don't. They, they don't. don't know. Yeah. They think yeah. they're doing well. Yeah, yeah. Because they see you and you're climbing and they're like, where, where, where's my turn? Right, right. There was a guy, I'm not going to name his name, but I lived in Silver Lake and I've said this before. He used to come to my um my um apartment and go check this out buddy i just killed at whatever right and he'd play a tape i'm not even kidding you you would hear it complete just him talking what's i I mean it's so easy to know that if he killed or not in comedy how do they not know delusion (laughs) delusion is a very very heavy cloud around the head people don't know and you know what i have the opposite effect i think that's good what good comics have you have to be a great judge of yeah, yourself. No, I'm almost like people hate me because like Whitney Cummings yells at me because she doesn't think that like I'll have a good set and go, I just ate it. Oh, oh, oh I'm one like of those too, guys. Too much. Yeah, yeah. And uh-huh. then she's like, fuck you. Oh, mm-hmm. that type. Mm-hmm. I'm, and I'm, I'm very annoying. But do you think other people ate it also when they had a good set or is it just yourself? Um. I think no. I think everyone. I can't read because the laughs you get from on stage is different from the back of the room. I see. Right. I mean, you're. Yeah. You know, a lot of times, like, somebody will say, "I can't, you know, like I'll have an opener that go, ah, that was hard." I go, "No, you're fine." Yeah. I heard you from the back of the room, and then I go up on stage. I go, "Oh my god, the acoustics is so weird. You can't really hear the laughs." True. Right. So yeah. it depends on what room you're playing, but um. So I can't tell unless I'm on stage. Mm. Mm. But um, I'm annoyingly yeah. the other way. Overcritical. When you were getting your degree in economics, yeah. were you already going to open mics? Mm, towards the last, when I turned 21. Because before that, you have to wait outside. Mm. The mm. clubs don't let you in. So that yeah. was probably my junior year or something like that. And that was when I, I started my first open mic during the summer when I was living with my dad here at the Haha ha Comedy Club. Oh, okay. You got to pay like five bucks for like yeah. five minutes of stage time. Wow, wow. So I did that for like a couple months, did one bringer show, and then that's when I went back to San Diego and like really pursued it. Because I just knew, I didn't know I could do stand up. Yeah. I just knew I really didn't want to do economics. So it, right. w- oh, so it wasn't even something that you were absolutely dying to get into? No, I, I mean, I, I don't know what your story is. So many people, like my friends, like, oh man, I used to watch Eddie Murphy sneak in the back of the theater with yeah, my yeah. brother when I was five years old, and I knew I wanted to be a stand up. And now my brother died of lung cancer. So every time I go on stage, it's for him, man. <laughs> and I'm like, what the fuck? Like, no, I just, I was just. <laughs> That's so true. I just yeah. I hated economics. I yeah. wanted to get laid. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I did stand up. Yeah, I'm the same I was way. desperate. You know, that's it. Oh no, mine was like I, my coffee shop that I worked at closed. Mm-hmm. I, it, I walked up to it and it just said closed. <laughs> they didn't give you a call. No, because in the '90s they didn't have we didn't have cell phones oh, right, or anything, right? right? So I go, it's closed. It's it closed forever. <laughs> closed forever. Very true. And, got, and when you have a job. And you, you're that. I was 23. Mm. I was like, oh fuck, what am I gonna do? I'll go next door because I, I used to take the. You know, we had large bills, mm-hmm. and I used to go to the comedy store to break them up at nights. So I knew the management, and then they had a sign. We needed a bar back, so I knocked on the door. I go, hey, can I get a job? Because yeah, because they closed. And Fred Burns goes, oh yeah, you're the kid from next door. Mm. I go, yeah. He goes, ah. Uh, all right, <laughs> show up two, you know, in two days, you know, at not eight or whatever, you know, I, so I showed up and I washed dishes, mm-hmm. you know, and then um, I watched the open mics one night and I was like, oh man, I'm going to try it. This is it. Yeah. These guys are terrible. 
<laughs> I'm better than them. No, you just, they're just terrible. Right. You know? And uh, no offense, but you know, when I started, those guys like Chris Clomber and that whole regime, they just didn't like me because I think it was me. I think I was the bad guy. I think I'm the villain Why? in this story. Because I'm very opportunistic, uh. and I want to make it. And I, I go, oh shit! I can hang out with locals, or oh fuck, there's Carlos Mencia. Right. Right. So I remember Carlos sitting there with his. He had a black manager at the time named Worthy Patterson. Mm. And I walked up to him. I go, hey dude, I saw your HBO special. He goes, oh yeah, cool, bro. I go, hey, I do stand up too. He goes, let me see you. And I went up. He let me go up. That's and awesome. Worthy was yeah. there. Worthy that's, signed me. Wow, that's great. Yeah, but From that's... From San Diego. That's huge. Yeah, I was living in San Diego. Yeah. And then Pauly saw me. Open for me in Vegas. Right? And the locals were like, look at this fucking guy. Right. Like, who the fuck This dude, dude is a fucking is? cockroach. Yeah. Weasel. Yeah. But they're in their own way because they don't think they can make it. So they're not there but when that's, the that's what, here's, that, Dude. You just nailed it in the fucking head right now, Jimmy O. Yang. <laughs> Full name. Okay. You have to dream big. Absolutely. Do, did you dream big when you were like working in Madhouse and all those fucking places? Yeah, bro? for sure. Like I, I don't know. I, I've I've always have. I'm fairly business minded, so I knew mm -hmm. I have a certain standard that I want to strive towards. Where some people, I guess, don't, or they're in their own way. Yeah. I feel like like even like our friend Robert, who I think is very funny, but he yeah. seems like he's just stuck in San Diego. Like he's in San Diego. Like so many people was like, oh man, my set needs to get this good to go up to LA. My set needs to get that good. He's like, no man, just fucking come up, dude. Announcement right now. I mean, I'm going to make an, I'm sorry for my, I'm sorry, babe. I have to do this. I have an announcement. You just, we just hit upon something. Okay. All right. The announcement is this. If you're a comic and you live in a city, right, like Austin, it's great, Peoria, wherever you are, right, you got to make the move. Mm -hmm. You got to yes. take, you got to go to the big fucking pond. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You got to be the little fish for a while. It feels good to be in a small town and, and run all these rooms and yeah. everyone in locally knows who you are. But at the end of the day, that's dreaming small, bro. Yeah. You got to dream big, man. That's but I, it's hard to say. Whoa. The only thing is because, like, <laughs> you don't want every open mic that did, like, two open mics to come here. You should get your craft going. Maybe do a couple years and then move up here. But you, you should make the move. No, because I'll tell you why. Even if they move up here, L.A., yeah. they get eaten up alive. You know how hard it is up here, the scene. Yeah. It's yeah. competitive as fuck, bro. Yeah. Sure. And let me tell you something right now. I, I spent three years in San Diego and I was like, mm, I, I think I can do it. Hmm. I'm going to conquer this fucking town. I walked up here and I fucking nearly, I, uh, that's when I developed boils on the face. <laughs> of stress? <laughs> yeah, stress of boils. stress boils. Yeah. And that's where I really found out what anger is. What was the plan when you came up to LA? Was it become a regular at the store? I was already a regular. Acting actually. Gigs? Oh, you were? Yeah, because I got lucky. You know, I got in with Pauly early, and then Mitzi saw me when I opened for him in Vegas. So I got lucky in that way. But that still wasn't a leg up for me because when I moved up here, you just couldn't get spots. Even if you were a regular at the store, already oh, really? there's 10,000 regulars. Mm -hmm. I mean, through the history of the comedy store, right. so many people got passed, and they still, all of them want spots. Mm -hmm. So at that time, you were like, oh, fuck, I have to wait in line. So it was the worst. What they did was um, they do these things called um, fallouts. Okay. So Mitzi would make a list of 10 comics, 12 comics. But there was another list. But you'd have to show up to sign up for it. It was called the fallout list. And so you'd have 20 guys show up or girls and that who were paid regulars and sign up on the fallout list. That's only if somebody didn't show up. Right. But who who would not show? So you're just sitting there with 20 people going, I'm eighth on the follow. Mm. Is eight people not going to show, show up, up tonight? Yeah. Mm -hmm. But you would you would stay there till two in the morning. Damn. And every once in a while, like there'll be no crowd, and you go like, Can I go up just at the end? Mm. Right. Yeah. It was that brutal. Man. So how did you make it? Was big TV was your big break, or is it before that? 
I'm sure maybe you talked about this. No, 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 no. I, uh, it's meeting, leaving Worthy. So I was with Carlos Mencia's manager, mm -hmm. Worthy Patterson. Great guy. And then I left her, him, which broke his heart, for Mit for Abby. Oh, okay. And what Abby... Abby Robbins? No, you don't know Abby. Don't know. But she's just like this old Jewish lady now in, that lives in uh, Venice. But she was, she at the time had Laura Keitlinger, Craig Anton, um, a lot of these guys, mm -hmm. Warren Hutchinson. Mm -hmm. And she had a stable of legitimate, mm -hmm. young, cool guys that were on TV. Yeah. So I was like, I signed with her, and I think that was my biggest. And then I met Matt Blake, my agent now. 